Our immune system has two fundamental lines of defense. They are, innate immunity, and adaptive immunity. Innate immunity represents the first response of the body when an intruder is detected. It is often referred to as non-specific immunity because, it does not discriminate against different types of pathogens, but rather recognizes peculiar patterns of frequently encountered pathogens. For example, based on cell wall components of bacteria it recognizes OK. It is a bacterial pathogen. However, these cells do not have memory. So, in the future, if the same pathogen attacks the body, they don't recall the previous attack, and consider it as a new pathogen. Cells involved in innate immunity act quickly. For example, it makes sure that, bacteria that have entered the skin through a small cut or wound, are detected and destroyed on the spot, within a few hours. Innate immunity is comprised of four types of defensive barriers. They are, anatomic, physiologic, phagocytic, and inflammatory. Anatomic barriers are the first line of defense against infection. For example, skin acts as a protective barrier, that prevents the entry of pathogens into the body. It also produces an oily secretion called sebum, which has an acidic pH that inhibits the growth of most microorganisms. Breaks in the skin due to scratches, wounds or insect bites, therefore lead to infection. An example is, malaria caused by a mosquito bite. Another anatomic barrier is, the mucous membrane lining the respiratory tract. They secrete mucus, which traps the pathogens, which are later pushed by cilia toward external nasal openings. So, whenever you sneeze, be happy that your immune system is active in clearing some pathogens from your nose. In addition, the mucosal layer is also colonized by non-pathogenic organisms known as normal microflora which protect from pathogens generally by competing with them for attachment sites and nutrients. Physiological barriers include, temperature, pH, and various soluble, and cell-associated biomolecules. We often get a fever. Again, this is one of the body's reactions to infection. A rise in temperature inhibits the growth of many organisms. Our stomach contains HCL, which helps in digestion. It is an acid, and most organisms cannot survive in acidic pH. We get tears if we are exposed to dust. Tears contain a hydrolytic enzyme called lysozyme, which cleaves the cell wall of many bacteria, that leads to the clearance of bacteria from the eyes. Virus-infected cells produce a soluble protein called interferon. Interferon binds to nearby cells, and induces a generalized antiviral state. The complement system consists of a group of serum proteins. These proteins enhance the ability of antibodies and phagocytic cells to clear microbes and damaged cells from an organism, promote inflammation, and attack the pathogen cell membrane. Collectins or collagen containing C-type lectins are soluble surfactant proteins that may kill certain bacteria directly by disrupting their lipid membranes, or alternatively, by aggregating the bacteria to enhance their susceptibility to phagocytosis. The main cell-associated molecules are toll-like receptors. These are membrane-spanning receptors usually expressed on immune cells. They recognize structurally conserved molecules derived from microbes. An example is, TLR2, which recognizes the lipopolysaccharide found in the cell wall of gram-negative bacteria, and helps in the elimination of bacteria. The immune system contains many cells called phagocytes. Their function is to engulf or eat a pathogen and digest it inside. This process is called phagocytosis, and it eliminates pathogens from the body. If we are injured, we can sense swelling and redness at the site of injury. It is a response of the immune system against tissue damage. Scientifically this is called inflammation, which is a complex sequence of events that generally has four signs, redness, swelling, heat, and pain. These signs are due to the following sequences. Tissue damage causes the release of some chemotactic factors such as cytokines, that attract phagocytic neutrophils to the site of injury. Chemicals such as vasoactive molecules cause vasodilation, that is, an increase in the diameter and permeability of nearby blood vessels. The increased blood flow causes redness and heat in that area. 
The increased permeability allows the influx of fluid containing immune reactive proteins. A particular peptide called kinin stimulates pain receptors resulting in pain. The accumulation of fluid results in swelling of the affected area. The increased permeability also allows phagocytes to squeeze through the wall of blood vessels to the affected area. Phagocytosis leads to the clearance of pathogens. Finally, clotting factors seal the wounded area. If the infection is mild, this response is sufficient to eliminate the pathogen. However, in case of severe infection, adaptive immunity comes into the picture.